So I'm going to run through an example of finding the limit uh, of Riemann sums to compute the area under a curve. I'm looking at number two here on our area and definite integrals worksheet number three. The function is x squared plus five and the interval is zero, three. And so just remember that this number here is A and this is B. And actually, I just screwed up that uh, interval there. Uh, that's not what I want. Where's the eraser? Why isn't it erasing? Um, well, I'm going to try one more thing here. Nope, not that. All right, so anyway, this is a, <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. This is a square box there. Okay, um, so remember our first step here is to compute delta x, which is b minus a over the letter n. And so for us, our delta x is 3 over n, and we're going to remember that for later. So I'm just going to put a box around it. Uh, we have to do the calculation for c sub k. Uh, c sub k, uh, we get that off our little chart is we're going to use the right hand end point, so that's a, which is 0, plus k times delta x, which is 3 over n. So that's going to be 3k over n when we do that calculation, right? 0 plus k times 3 over n is 3k over n. Then we have to plug that c sub k into the function to figure out the expression f of c sub k. So we're going to have um, 3k over n squared, because the function is x squared plus 5. So 3k over n squared plus 5. And I'm going to simplify that a little bit. This is 9k squared over n squared plus 5. We do all of that so that we can write out our area expression. The area expression is a equals the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of the heights times the width. So the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of c sub k, which we have in the blue here, is 9k squared over n squared plus 5 times delta x, which is 3 over n. And I'm going to pick up with this on the next slide, and I'll finish off this algebra. So here's that area expression, and then what we need to do is start evaluating this uh, sigma sum so that we can take the limit. And so we're just going to start by doing some algebra here. I'm going to distribute the 3 over n, and that will give me two terms, uh, 27k squared over n cubed plus 15 over n. And we've learned that we can break these sigmas uh, into the sum of two sigmas. And I, so I'm going to break this expression here down using our sigma rules or properties uh, so that I can evaluate these things. So uh, I've got some big bracket here that I'm going to do the limit on. Remember, n is going to infinity there, man. Okay. And so on this first term here, 27k squared over n cubed, I'm going to factor out the 27 over n cubed. Those do not involve the letter k. And then the remaining term is just a k squared. And we have a formula for a sigma k squared. On the other end, with the 15 over n, that's just the sigma of a constant. And so uh, remember that the sigma of a constant is just the top number, n, times the constant. So I'm going to do n times 15 over n and just get 15 there. So this part of the sum is just a 15. And down on this first sigma, the 27n cubed is a constant multiple. Oops, that's an n, not an m. Is this thing going to let me erase this time or not? Yes. For some reason, it wasn't working last time. It was working now. Pause. Okay, so those announcements went off, but I'm back. And so this was, you know, this is supposed to be n cubed. And then remember, we have a formula for a sigma k squared. And that formula is 
oops, this is supposed to be a black ink. Uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And then there's a plus sign here and a 15. i got to put the rest of my uh, limit notation in. We're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay. So uh, we're getting close here. I'm just going to need to uh, evaluate this limit, which I'll continue on the next slide. Okay, so picking up with our expression here, I want you to notice that we can do a little bit of reducing here. Um, 3 goes into 6, 2 times. 3 goes into 27, 9 times. That just makes the arithmetic a little easier for me mentally. Um, so the other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to distribute this multiplication out here. And I've done that ahead of time. And that is uh, 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n. And then I've got a 2 here on the bottom, and I have 9 over n cubed here. I'm going to multiply that out in a second. I think that's a 15 on the end there. I hope it is, because I don't feel like redoing this video. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we're getting close. Uh, take a look at this. I'm going to distribute the 9. So multiply that to all these terms. And I'll multiply the n cubed along here on the bottom. And that gives me... Uh, geez, 18n cubed plus 27n squared plus 9n over, that's an n there, 2n cubed. And since I'm doing this limit here uh, on this rational function, we've learned that when you're doing the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, a rational function with two polynomials, and the degree is the same, that all we're going to do is just do the ratio of the coefficients. So this part here is 9 and um, so the limit here is 9. And then the limit on a constant 15 is just 15. And so this adds up to 24 square units. So the area under that curve from uh, on the interval 0, 3 ends up being 24 square units. So hopefully this uh, reminds you the process of taking the limit of those Riemann sums. We know that uh, using a definite integral is a much more efficient way to compute this area, uh, but this is uh, the video was designed to show you the process. Uh, keep the questions coming, and good luck.